tracksuit. I'm Gigi. I'm a working lawyer and I started this channel to provide my experiences and share some of my stories and tips to help women like myself. Um, in today's video, I want to talk about something that's been on top of my mind and that is how the pandemic is affecting women in the workplace and what are the trends we're seeing and what may happen down the line. And I am prompted to do this video due to a recent McKinsey report that I saw. Um, and McKinsey is a consulting firm and they work together with the leanin.org organization to compile some research regarding how women have fared in the workplace since the start of the pandemic. And the findings are a little troubling and disheartening and just want to share with you one of the things that stuck with me from the report, which I'll link down below if you're interested in reading about it, is that prior to the pandemic start, 46% of the labor force was comprised of women. And when the pandemic hit, we've been seeing 54% of women leaving the workforce. And that means that women are being disproportionately affected by the pandemic and the economic downturn resulting from the pandemic. So this is all very disappointing to hear. Um, and a lot of it is due to the fact that women still are in a primary caregiver role. Um, I know that some of my friends who are new moms, they are the ones primarily caring for the children uh, while the fathers are still working. And when the pandemic hit, that caregiver role got more emphasis because now we see kids working or learning from home too, and the parents have to be available to facilitate that because now we don't have teachers in the same place as students. So to really make sure that the kids are learning, you have to have supervision. And so that has meant that women are having to cut down on some of their professional activities in order to tend to home activities. And the McKinsey report actually found that the women who were surveyed indicated that they were two times more likely than their male counterparts to feel like they need to spend an additional five hours on caregiving or household duties. And that is the case for families where both parents are working. So it is something we see a lot in the legal industry for sure. And so again, it's disappointing that women are having to maybe sacrifice some of their workplace activities and advancement activities in order to spend those additional five hours that they feel they need to spend. And compounding this issue, we see that in the minority communities, particularly the Black and Latino communities, working moms are being affected even more adversely than the rest of the female or mother population because these populations, minority populations, are often employed in jobs that don't allow for flexibility, such as remote work or schedules that allow them to take some time off to give care to their children and their sick ones that they have to tend to at home. So these moms and these minority populations are even more severely affected than any other females. <laughs> so very unfortunate circumstances. And, and also, of course, these, these populations, um, they tend to have moms who may be single parents, and so there is no support at all. The, the mother only has herself to rely on to ensure that everything is taken care of for their children and for their families. Um, so it's a very sad situation. And even for women who have teleworking or flexible schedules, the situation isn't that much better for them because they are still having to juggle the demands of the home life with demands of the work life. In a report from the American Bar Association from last year, it was noted that 54% of surveyed women reported that they were the ones 
who have full responsibility of arranging childcare for their children, whereas only 1% of men reported the same. So we see that even for women who can get some flexibility from their organizations and their supervisors, it's not much better because they still remain in the role of primary caregiver and having to arrange for caregiving. So all that said, how is the workplace handling this? Well, it doesn't appear from at least what I've seen that there's been much response or action on the part of industry heads to accommodate this development and this phenomenon of women, ha women having to sacrifice some of their work lives in order to take care of their home lives. Um, McKinsey reports that only one third of the companies they researched acknowledged the, this phenomenon and accommodated it by developing new performance review criteria to account for the fact that some of the employees cannot work as they usually do given that we are in a unprecedented crisis. So that's nice to hear that at least some firms are acknowledging it, but one third is not many and <laughs> way more than one third of women are feeling the effects I and mean, working women are feeling the effects of this current crisis and economic downturn. And in that same American Bar Association report, it noted that while 45% of entering associate classes in the top 200 law firms in the US um, is female, the percentage of equity partners at those top 200 law firms that are female is only 25%. And in 2017, it was found that only 28% of lateral partners hired were female. Another interesting statistic is that women make up less than 25% of committee heads, managing partners, and other leadership positions within law firms. Based on this research done by the American Bar Association, it noted too that there won't really be gender parity in the industry until 2181, which is a long ways off and a very scary to think about that. And the, the reality is I think that, and a lot of articles have acknowledged this or different legal news sources, women in the legal profession tend to be staffed on lower billing cases. A lot of these women are not given opportunities to be on the highest um, profile cases of the firm that generate the most amount of money. And so when a recession or economic, economic downturn occurs, these women are more likely to be the first ones to be let go because they're not generating enough revenue for the firm. Um, and that's unfortunately due to the fact that they're not put on the biggest clients cases. So. That's something that the industry still grapples with today. So given all the troubling information I came across in the McKinsey report and also the American Bar Association's, Bar Association's report on the progress of women in the legal industry, I thought hard about how can we maybe change the tide here and help women survive, especially during crisis like the one where feeling now and any future economic downturn that might occur. And I have a few tips or thoughts that I wanna share. Um, number one is given that we know women are reporting having to take on more household responsibilities and take on full responsibility of child caregiving even, maybe it's time that we, the female working population asked our partners, significant others, husbands, to step up their efforts to help out and provide care as well, to have more equality within the home so that women don't have to bear the full burden of raising children or caring for children. 
And that's something that maybe will take time to really um, embed within the domestic life um, as a common practice. But I think if we take baby steps toward thinking about it and slowly making small acts of our partners or significant others, in the long haul, I think we'll see great benefits and maybe less women will report that they feel completely responsible for all aspects of child caregiving or any caregiving in the home life. And the second thought I had on this topic uh, is maybe we should feel like we have more right or ability to ask our workplace supervisors and managers to grant us more flexibility in terms of how we tackle our work schedules. And of course, some companies are already responding really well to and, and very accommodating of women who have to juggle their child caregiving activities and their work activities. But I think for those women who find that it's still not enough to help them get by and to, to thrive in the workplace, not just survive, maybe a little more feeling that you can make the ask is is good thing and perhaps once more women start making the ask or even men or just your colleagues in general start feeling like they can make that ask of management then i think everybody will feel that it's not taboo to ask for more flexibility in this unprecedented time and um, my third thought is geared toward women in law firm settings. Um, it, it's probably a good idea to seek out more client work that has a higher hourly rate. Because if you generate more income for the firm, you're less likely to be the first one to be let go of when cost cutting measures need to be taken. Because you are worth as much as you generate for the firm. So to the extent you can get on higher profile cases, higher billing clients, clients with a lot of work that come in the door, that's I think in the long run better for career advancement. And some of these clients and or the cases that tend to generate more income for law firms are corporate mergers and acquisitions or private equity if you're in the corporate law space and if you're in the litigation space the types of work that generate more income for the firm is typically the class action litigation multi-district litigation or antitrust litigation so to the extent that you can squeeze yourself into one of those segments and get work related to those areas that will really benefit you in the long run. And I'll think some more about this topic of how the pandemic is affecting the women population in the workforce and I'll share whatever other thoughts I have in the future, but I really wanted to put this video out for now just to get out there some of the ideas I have in my mind right now about what's happening and what could be done to improve our situation. And if you found this video helpful, please press the thumbs up button. And if there's any questions or comments, um, any concerns you have about anything I said or any thoughts you want to share, please feel free to put them in the comments below. And if you like what you saw today, please consider subscribing and hit that notification button so you'll get an alert when my next video comes up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.